artists, welcome back to my virtual art room. What do you think of my tiny art gallery? Well, today we're gonna learn how we can create and curate our own miniature collection of art. Let's get started. There are two parts to this assignment. The first part is to create or crear. In this section, you will learn how to make your own miniature collection of art. A collection or colección is a group of objects that have been gathered together. You will be creating at least three pieces of art for your collection. Although the pieces you create will be different, they need to look like they belong together. You can create unity or unidad through your use of art elements, materials, and technique. Another way artists can create unity within a collection of work is through a common idea, subject, or theme. Una idea, sujeto, o tema consistente. Now let's take a look at how some artists have created their own miniature collections. These small sunset paintings by Dina Brodsky demonstrate unity in their subject matter and circle-shaped canvases. Remember, paintings don't always have to be rectangles. Shay Aaron sculpts miniature food items. Notice how detailed each piece is. There's even pepper on the mashed potatoes. What teeny tiny details will you include in your work? Carol Adone paints enchanting miniature worlds inside tiny lockets. This series is inspired by the solar system. She calls her lockets tiny escape portals. Where could your imagination take you? Rosa de Jong's tiny worlds offer an interesting perspective on our natural and built environments. Take a look at her charming series of architectural miniatures. Although each one is different, they still look like they belong together. How has she shown unity in her work? Hassan Kale has been creating art on small, everyday objects for over two decades. Any tiny item could be the canvas for his next mini masterpiece. From these butterflies to almonds, bottle caps, and leaves. His work is a reminder that we don't need conventional materials to make art. John Almeida is a self-taught ceramic artist who soon discovered that working small was much harder than he imagined. John finds inspiration from the world around him. What will inspire your work? These coins by Andre Levy are from a collection of more than 200 pop character portraits on coins. The series is called Tales You Lose. What clever title will you come up with for your miniature collection? Willard Wiggins is the creator of the world's smallest handmade works of art. His delicate sculptures require a microscope in order to create and see, but can take months to complete. Here is a series of trees depicting the four seasons. He created them inside the tiny hole of a sewing needle. Luckily, the work in your collection should be small, but it doesn't need to be this small. In 2013, Lorraine Lutz began a project called 365 Paintings for Ants. She completed one small painting every day for a whole year. You only need three works of art for your collection, but you can choose to make more if you'd like. Now it's your turn to create a tiny art collection. To start, choose an idea, subject, or theme that is meaningful to you. Think about what interests you. What fascinates you? What are you passionate about? Focus on one thing to create unity in your work. How you make your work is up to you as well. You can create drawings, paintings, collages, sculptures, or work digitally. You can also use other forms of art, such as sewing, weaving, knitting, jewelry making. The choice is yours. Now it's time to get to work. To complete the first part of this assignment, you need to think. What will you make? What is the central idea, subject, or theme? Next, you need to plan. How will you make your work? What materials do you need? Write or draw down your ideas. The last step is to create. Make sure you complete three or more miniature works of art. Now let's move on to part two, curate. Here you will take on the role of a curator or curador. You will learn how to select, organize, and present your collection. Step one is to select or seleccionar. You need to choose a space 
to display your collection. You can find a space in your home, such as on a shelf or in the corner of a room. You can also create a space by making a miniature room with a cardboard box. Or you can repurpose a space. This little free library has been transformed into a mini outdoor gallery. You can even reimagine a space anywhere else around your house. The next step is organize or organizar. Here you will arrange and display your collection. You can hang or tape your 2D artwork to a wall, even add some toys or figures as your visitors. Or you can build your own tiny furniture and place any 3D work on small pedestals or tables. You can even arrange your gallery for small pets to visit. Don't forget to add final details. Choose a title or even write an artist statement. You can create a miniature sign, poster, or book to display. Finally, it's time to present or presentar. Here you will share your miniature collection. When you photograph your work, make sure that you're standing close. You don't want to be too far away. We want to be able to see your tiny masterpieces. When taking a picture, it's a good idea to hold your camera at eye level with your artwork. You might need to bend down to take a photo. Also, make sure you have bright lighting so that everyone can see your work clearly. You can move things around and take multiple photographs as well. Here's my favorite picture of my miniature collection. Now it's your turn to curate. Start off by selecting a space for your work. Next, organize your art and add final details. Then, present and photograph your work. And finally, share it with your classmates online. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how you can create and curate your own miniature collection. And I can't wait to see what your tiny art show looks like. Until next time, keep creating. Bye.